Hey everyone, Shane again here, Certified Crop Advisor for Big Yield. And today, I'd like to talk to you just a little bit uh, about our soil health. A lot, a lot, a lot of times, soil health gets overlooked. Uh, it's, here, here, I'll tell you what the, uh, the standard operation for most of us is. Well, we need to know what, uh, what we're going to need for that season. And so we go out to a 300 acre field, uh, maybe smaller, maybe larger. And we take one bag of soil and we send it off to the lab and we, well, here's what we need for the year. And we may even use that for the next, <laughs> the, for those recommendations for the next three years. Well, I, there's nothing inherently wrong with that, but we can do better. That's the key, okay? We can do better. And uh, I think in my head, uh, a, a, an illustration for this, um, I have the privilege of being, and have had for the last several years, of being a, a baseball coach on a competitive baseball team, for a competitive baseball team. And as the manager, uh, there, there are so many great things that happen, but one of the things that is hard for, hard for me to do every single year is, is cut kids when it comes to tryouts. You know, you have, you have these kids that come out and they try so hard, but uh, you can only keep the, the best kids. It's a, it's a competitive baseball team, and so that's the hard thing about it. Now, what am I getting at? Well, if, if, if a kid comes and I say to him, you know, hey son, nice to meet you, right? Glad you came to the tryout today. I'd like to see you throw a ball. And so I, I hand the kid a baseball, puts it into his hand and he, and he throws it. Maybe he throws it a mile. Maybe he doesn't throw it very far at all. Either way, after he's done throwing the ball, I say, awesome job, you are on the team. Well, what did I just do there? Well, I didn't take enough of a sample size, right? I'd, I need to know how the kid bats. I need to know how he runs. Can he catch? And at, at what parts of the field can he catch the best? Is he an infielder? Is he an outfielder? And so if I'm going to just allow kids on the team just based on one attribute, whether they can throw, or maybe maybe it's whether they can bat, or, or just say, hey, let me see how fast you are, uh, that's just not going to give me a good overall picture of the player that I'm inviting uh, onto our competitive baseball team. Not only that, it's not really gonna be fair uh, to a lot of the other kids, right? So that may be a crude illustration, but that's kind of what I think of when it comes to um, uh, soil health, because we take that one sample and, and really not telling the full story of what's going on in our field. What's, what's happening um, in the dirt uh, in that particular field. So what do we need to do? Uh, well, I've preached this and I've preached this, if you've been around me, you know that I think grid sampling is, a, is a, an incredibly important thing. Get your fields grid sampled. And, and by, you, don't, you don't have to do two and a half acre grids. Uh, you don't even have to do five acre grids. If you've got a large enough field, you got, if you've got a three or 400 acre field, do it in 10 acres. At least you know there uh, exactly what you have in different parts of the field. You guys have been over your fields to know, uh, enough to know that uh, each, each quadrant each section is different. This one's got more water, this one's lower, this one's, this one's a little bit higher. And all those things, all those different factors factor in. And uh, that said, you're gonna have a, a variation in soil type. You're gonna have a variation in uh, whether your soil is, is, is acidic or alkaline. And so uh, making sure you know what that is is going to play a big part in um, how your dollars are used. And what I mean by that is that we take that bag of soil, we send it off to the lab, and it comes back and tells us exactly what we need to put on for the season as far as our P and our K, right? Okay, and that's, that's great. That gives, us, that gives us an idea of, of what we need to put out there. But what happens when our, for example, our soil pH is not right? What happens, what happens if our soil is too acidic and our plant is just unable to use the fertilizer that you put out there? What happens if our, if our plants, uh, or if our soil is too alkaline and it's just unable to reach and access the dollars that you put into your field? And you know as well as I do that, um, uh, that throwing that good money after bad is not going to help on the bottom line. So <clears throat> it's important, even just, just in the story of pH, 
uh, to know exactly what we've got going on, whether we need to lime those fields or whether we don't. Uh, but a lot of times I see people do these grit samples and, and, uh, grit, and, and I look and I, I see one particular part of the field has um, uh, has an acidic problem, but the other ones are good. So um, you may not uh, have to use much lime. Um, and, and if that's the case, you know, we, we all do a dance about that. So um, that's, uh, that's important things. But there are other factors that we get uh, when, we, when we get a soil test back, right? Not just, not just the, uh, the recommendations for P and K and all those different uh, grids or in all those different sites, but we're also understanding our CEC. Well, the CEC is the cation exchange capacity. And without going a lot into that, each of the ions, including the, uh, the ions in our fertilizer, um, are either positively or negatively charged. And if they don't match up, in short, if they don't match up, um, if they're not able to adhere to each other, uh, then we're not going to have the, uh, the success we need, again, for the plant to take up the nutrients, right? The plant is not going to respond uh, to, to the soluble water and to the, uh, to the nutrients that are in the soil. So just in cation exchange, we have to know what that is. And so you're like, okay, well, what if I have a cation exchange issue? Well, we can work on that. Those are things that we can work on, that we can manage in that particular field, whether it be by uh, making sure that the pH is correct. But another thing, another factor that comes out in that soil report is organic matter. Now that's super important. What's our organic matter look like, right? What, what are the, um, is there enough carbon? Is there enough of a source of carbon in my field in order for the, uh, the process, the natural process of nitrification to take place, right? Or is the soil able to break down in such a way that my plants, again, have a good bed, that the roots have a good bed to, to grow in and reach out and go and get the nutrients that are there? Do the, do, do the roots of the plant have a good bed to reach out and go and, and chase down the dollars um, that I've thrown into that field? Guys, the biology of the soil is vastly important, right? Our, uh, the fungal activity, the bacterial activity there, that are in our soils, uh, they're important as well. And so along with the organic matter, along with our cation exchange capacity, uh, comes this idea of, of, of living organisms that are within our soil. Our plants, our plants need those living organisms in order to thrive, in order to, uh, to get those big yields that we are looking for. I want you guys to think about some of these products that, that are here at Big Yield. Um, we have some biological products that can be put on foliar, and uh, I, I've seen those again, increase the biological activity, they increase the fungal activity, and um, give the plant that opportunity uh, to take up those nutrients and to use them in, in vital ways uh, to increase um, the, uh, all the good things that are happening in that plant. You know, uh, one product that I really like, it's a fairly, really simple product, is uh, the, the Big Sweet Yield. And Man, this, this stuff can be used, it can be used in your herbicide program because it can go on, open the stomates of, of, not, just the, uh, of not just the crops themselves, but man, when this stuff hits the weeds, um, it loves that sugar, they love that sugar too. And so the herbicide gets in and it does a more effective job. I've seen it do that. And uh, again, the plants love it and because it's, it's increasing the fertility it's increasing the vigor of the plant and just giving it an opportunity uh, to grow. So uh, Big Sweet Yield is awesome. And I know you've seen probably a lot of the, uh, a lot of testimonials on what it can do for uh, insects in the field. Now, after, after a few years, I believe if you, if you use it regularly, you're going to see a drop in, 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 in insects that are harmful to your crops, the, the bean leaf beetles and uh, some of the harmful worms um, if you're using this, this product on a regular basis. So uh, great products here um, and, and they have a lot of good options. I mean, uh, we've got a lot of good options here at Big Yield, uh, things that uh, can, and can be um, tailored to your program. It can be entered in, they can be entered into the things that you're already doing um, to help increase yield 
and uh, incre help to uh, raise that bottom line. So soil health, you, I don't have to tell you guys, it's vastly important, but it's important that we know exactly uh, what we need to do with it. What's the story in our field? So uh, take, uh, ma make sure that you're, uh, again, being proactive, making a plan, and understanding what's in your soil uh, so that we can have an awesome 2021. Thanks for listening.